so so I, I, as i told you um, if you have any any doubts or clarification you can text to me uh, later and uh, now actually i got some questions from some of our brothers and sisters so i'm trying to make a clarification for those questions now and then we will continue the same topic of previous class so uh, those who are recording you can record now because uh, i'll be uh, just uh, continuing the portion along with this it means i'll be uh, concluding this uh, pro, I mean, this uh, portions and questions with our i mean topic so we'll be just continuing in that way so we will uh, uh, record it and uh, it will be a blessing so um uh, now i am just trying to clarify those questions which i already got and uh, uh, actually i am not going to simply give the answer for those questions but uh, uh, let me try to cover some of the uh, important portions of book of revelation along with that i mean so the question number 1 is like this the the jews appointment of nations think about when it is going to happen when it is going to happen it is going to happen at the end of the tribulation period after israel has been judged the nations of earth will be judged by christ and his church so we also will be there to judge the nations okay we also will be there you know uh, at the end, maybe at the end of the tribulation period uh, then we i mean uh, jesus christ and we uh, with him will be judging uh the nations okay this judgment will not be uh, against an individual but against the nations for their treatment of the jewish people you know uh the the people were uh, uh uh treating in a in a different different way to the jewish people okay the other nations you know there were there are many other nations who were attacking israel and there are many other nations who, those who were uh, troubling the people of israel so god has to judge those nations god has to judge those nations and really that will happen one day i mean uh, about that it is written in in the prophetical book of joel also that is from chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 joel chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 yeah For behold in those days and at the time when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and I will enter into the judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my heritage Israel because they have scattered them among the nations and divided and have divided up my land Okay okay it's, it's very clear that uh, uh, the judgment of the nations will be happening i mean uh, uh during the time or at the end of the tribulation period uh, that also will i mean maybe uh, uh explain in the in the upcoming classes okay now we will go to the uh, fifth judgment the fifth judgment uh, that is uh, uh the judgment of angels the judgment of angels the judgment of angels and uh, that is from second peter chapter 2 verse 4 and jude chapter 1 verse 6 second peter chapter 2 verse 4 and jude chapter 1 verse 6 we will read those two verses then we will explain what is the judgment of angels yeah for if god did not spare angels when they sinned but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to keep and ke- to ke- to be kept until judgment and the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority authority but left their proper dwelling he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day okay so this judgment on angels this is on sinned angels okay there are some of the sinned angels that means the angels those who sinned against god okay so this is going to be upon the the the, the sinned angels the judgment of angels now um, they you know uh, when you when you read these verses particularly we understand now at present 
these angels are this is this is you know uh, uh, when you study about the angelology you will understand uh, there are different gangs and different groups of the angels like uh, the heavenly angels are there and the same time the satanic angels are there heavenly angels are there satanic angels are there now you know these angels which is mentioned here in second peter chapter 2 verse 4 and jude chapter 1 verse 6 we understand they are in the pit of darkness and they are reserved for judgment they are in the pit of darkness and they are reserved for judgment that means they are in lockup they are in lockup until the judgment and punishment this is very very clearly we, we can understand if if a person is caught for any any crime that person directly will not be going to the judgment or directly will not be going to the punishment but that person will be uh, locked uh, in, a, in a lockup then only after the judgment only he is going to get the punishment okay the same thing is going to happen with these fallen angels fallen angels means the sinned angels that they are now at present they are in the pit of darkness and they are reserved for judgment that means they are waiting for the judgment of jesus christ you know uh, these angels these angels are uh, 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 not, not the lucifer and his group okay this is different so when you when you study and when you read that particular verse again and again you will understand very clearly that uh, these angels are not uh, not now, not uh, 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 with the with the Lucifer and uh, 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 their group, but this is different. This is different. You know, uh, let us read Jude chapter one, verse uh, six and seven. One second. Jude chapter one, verse six and seven. One second. Read. And the angels who do not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling. He has kept an eternal change under gloomy darkness until the day, until the judgment of the great day. Just as Saddam and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desires, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Okay, I don't know uh, how many of you are listening to those verses. Okay, even though you're writing just uh, go through that verses okay if you are not able to go through that verses now later you can go through verses you know verse 6 says like this and angels who did not keep their own domain but abandoned their proper abode he has kept in eternal bonds under the darkness for the judgment of the great day okay so here it is written and the angels who did not keep their own domain but left their proper dwelling, left their proper dwelling. And in verse 7, it says that just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise or same way indulged in sexual immorality and pursued a natural desire. Okay, listen very carefully that verse. There is a particular usage which is, uh, which is written uh, by Jude, the apostle of John, or apostle of Jesus, that their proper dwelling. That means these angels could not keep their proper dwelling. Okay, in verse 6, eh, that, is, that is speaking about their body or their being. The body of the angel or the, the being of the angel that is the meaning of their proper dwelling that that doesn't mean that where they were staying okay uh, their proper dwelling doesn't mean that the place where they were residing it is not the meaning of that but the meaning is their body or their being that is the that is the meaning of that so that means these angels left their being and indulged in sexual immorality with human they were angels but they are having the relationship with the, the human. Okay, so because of that sin, or because of that, I mean that kind of sin, now they are kept in the pit of darkness. They are kept in the pit of darkness, and they are reserved for judgment. So the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, and also these angels were involved in equal sin of sexual immorality. The equal sin. Okay, these angels 
And also the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were doing the same sin, okay? And the wickedness during the time of Noah, that is very clear during the time of Noah. And uh, uh, the sin of these angels is, uh, is mentioned and written in the Old Testament. Okay, what was the sin of these angels that is written in Old Testament? Can anyone say where it is mentioned in the Old Testament? What was the sin of these people, these angels? Genesis. Genesis. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. So it is in Genesis chapter 6. It is in Genesis chapter 6. Okay. So what was the sin and what was the wickedness that these angels were doing? So we will read two verses from Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 and 4. 1 and 4. Yeah. Yes, sir. When man, be when man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them and Nephilim were on, were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came, came into the daughter, daughters of man and they bore children to them. These were the mi mighty men who were of, of old and men of renown. Okay, so you have to read these verses very carefully because there are something which is which we cannot understand all of a sudden when we read okay so uh, here we see the daughters of shame harm and japheth daughters of shame harm and japheth were so beautiful and they were so fair okay in these verses read verse 2 it is it is written like this that the sons of god saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives for themselves, whomever they, they chose, right? Okay, so here we can understand that the sons of God took wives for themselves from among these daughters, from among these daughters. That means there are different views about these sons of God and daughters of men, okay? That the particular phrase which is mentioned there, the sons of God and the daughters of men. Okay? But most of the theologians <coughs> believe that these are the sinned angels and daughters uh, of men before the flood. Okay? Before the flood, it is written in, in this uh, chapter 6. Okay? So uh, theologians are saying that these are the sinned angels and daughters of men before the flood. Okay? So in, in, in verse 4 also, uh, we read like this, that the... Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old men of Renault. Okay, in, in verse 4, we see that through this relationship, the relationship with the sons of God and the, and the daughters of men, daughters of men, through this relationship, the Nephilim, in, in Malayalam it is written, Malanmar, Malanmar, the Nephilim, the, the giants also you can call, were born on the earth. And these people were the mighty men or they were giants. They were mighty men and they were giants. Okay, it is, it is there in verse 4 of Genesis chapter 6. Okay, anyway. Uh, it is believed that a group of fallen angels who separated from the Lucifer's group. Okay, we know that Lucifer and his group of angels, some of a, a, a group of angels, they were fallen down from heaven to earth. Okay, so that is known as the satanic angels, satanic angels. So now, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, we believe that the group of fallen angels who separated from the Lucifer's group who did the wickedness with human daughters are kept in the pit of the darkness and they will have a judgment in future. They will have a judgment in future. Now we are studying about the judgment upon the angels. What is going to happen for the angels? Okay, so we are, we are coming to the, the question, the first question. This is the, the we are getting into the, into the answer of that first question. Okay, now we are studying about when this is going to happen, what is going to happen for the fallen angels? 
okay so now at present they are kept i mean uh, uh, in the pit of the darkness and they will have the judgment in future okay and uh, let me remind you one thing that uh, uh, in between we have to know one thing that lucifer and his satanic gang is not bound or not in chain now right you may be knowing that okay satan that means the lucifer or the the devil spirit or what you can call it as a lucifer satanic gang there is a group of angel fallen angels they are not bound now they are not in chain now rather they are wandering everywhere to defeat the children of god okay when you read first peter chapter 5 verse 8 there very clearly it says that what is the situation and what the fallen angels are doing now or what the devil is doing now okay in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 okay i I'll, i'll give you one more time the difference between those things and after reading reading this portion okay first peter chapter 5 verse 8 be sober minded be watchful your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour okay so your enemy the devil is like a roaring lion walking around to find someone to attack this is written in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 this speaks about the fallen angels including lucifer he is the he is the leader lucifer is the leader of the fallen angels but at the same time there is another group of angels another group of satanic angels those who were separated from the lucifer's group and they were just indulging themselves with the uh, the the immorality and everything with a human being, the, the the daughters of the men the daughters of the men okay so those angels are waiting for the for the judgment but these angels the lucifer and satanic the other sta- satanic group they are now they are now uh, uh, now working as a as a as a roaring lion what is that in malayalam alarna simham pole le alarna simham pole are വിഴുങ്ങേണ്ടു എന്ന് വിചാരിച്ച് ചുറ്റി തിരിഞ്ഞു നടക്കുന്നു എന്നാണ് പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നത് സോ നൗ ദീസ് ഐ മീൻ സൈറ്റാനിക് ദ ഡെബിൾ ഈസ് റോറിംഗ് ജസ്റ്റ് ലൈക്ക് എ റോറിംഗ് ലൈൻ വാക്കിംഗ് അറൗണ്ട് ദി 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 പീപ്പിൾ ആൻഡ് ടു ഫൈൻ സമൺ ടു അറ്റാക്ക് എനിവേ യു നോ ദി ദി ഏഞ്ചലോളജി ഈസ് എ സ്റ്റഡി ഓഫ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദി വൺ ഓഫ് ദി വാസ്റ്റ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ്സ് ഓഫ് സിസ്റ്റമാറ്റിക് തിയോളജി Uh, actually we do not uh, have time to explain all those things like uh, uh, who are the angels and uh, what are their duties uh, or who is satan and what what are the satan's schemes or tricks uh, okay we will we will we will study about all those things later if time permits okay but uh, you know when i speak about these kinds of sins of the angels uh, naturally you may have a question that can the angels do these kinds of sins can the angels do these kinds of sins since they are spirit beings without a human body so we believe that uh, angels doesn't have a physical body right the angels doesn't have a physical body then how can we say that uh, according to genesis chapter 6 that the angels came down and angels were having the relationship with uh, the the daughters of men the human being okay so this is a this is a normal question that you can ask that how it is possible uh, as long as the angels are the spirit beings and the human are having a physical body so how can these angels do the sins of this kind okay so the answer is in matthew chapter 22 verse 30 matthew chapter 22 verse 30 okay as i told you i am trying to uh, clarify the questions along with the portions that we are covering okay we are covering the portions one by one okay uh, these all portions are related to the book of revelation okay so now we will read matthew chapter 22 verse 30 yeah for for in the resurrection they ne- wait for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are like angels in heaven okay so jesus said like this at the resurrection 
at the resurrection punaridhanathil the people will neither marry nor be given in marriage vivahathinu kodukunnilla vivaham kalikunnilla at the resurrection that means after the resurrection okay so they will be like the angels in heaven listen very carefully that words they will be like the angels in heaven who who the people of god after the resurrection the resurrection speaks about the number one resurrection is the physical resurrection and the second one is the rapture okay so after the rapture after the rapture or after the resurrection from the death from the dead okay so what will happen they will not neither marry nor be given in marriage but they will be like the angels in heaven they will be like angels in heaven swargathile doodanmare pole aayirikkum avar which means the angels in heaven will not marry but if they are fallen from the presence of god there are chances and there are possibilities that they can take a body and mingle with human i think i am clear for you okay you know um it is it is written specifically there the angels in heaven they will not do those things the angels in heaven that means the angels those who are in the presence of god they cannot do all these things they do not do all these things but if they are fallen from the presence of god there are many chances there are many possibilities that they can take a body and mingle with the human people okay uh, not only that uh, we see many places in bible that uh, the angels were appeared uh, to 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 uh, different people okay in the form of human can anyone say one example for that angels appeared for somebody in the form of a man okay. yes abraham abraham very good okay there are many 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 places okay so so for you know for example abraham you know three angels three angels appeared to abraham um, in the form of men and they ate the food with abraham right they ate the food with abraham that means there are possibilities for that there are possibilities for that okay so with that uh, i am closing the fifth uh, judgment that was the uh, judgment on the angels now we will go to the sixth one the sixth judgment and that sixth judgment is known as the final judgment final uh, judgment that is from revelation chapter 20 verses 11 and 12 revelation chapter 20 verses 11 and 12 yeah then i saw a great white thorn and him who was sitting on it from his presence earth and the sky fled away and no place was found for them and i saw the dead great and small standing before the throne and the books were opened then another book were, was opened which is the book of life and the dead was were and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done okay so uh, listen one thing uh, i am not giving you the the chronologic chronological order of the uh, <clears throat> judgments okay just i am giving the, the seven judgments without a chronological order okay so it will it it is not uh, i mean uh, happening uh, uh, maybe chronologically that means accordingly but it may happen in different times but just i am uh, giving you some ideas about the judgments of the bible okay so this one is the sixth one is known as the final judgment which is written in revelation chapter 20 okay you know uh, in that judgment jesus will be the judge and he will judge all the sinners and all the unbelievers both alive and dead both alive and dead okay so jesus will be judging all the sinners all the unbelieving people both alive and dead so after this judgment if if anyone if anyone's name is not found or written in the book of life he will be thrown into the lake of fire Okay, that is what we read in this chapter 20 verses 11 and 12 okay after this judgment after the final judgment 
if anyone's name is not found okay if your name or my name is not found in the uh, or written in the in the book of life uh, that person will be thrown into the lake of fire okay so this is called the final judgment okay all these things we will be discussing uh, very uh, explain we will explain all those things later a uh, little more uh, further okay so now we are we are just i mean finding the answer for the question now we are coming to the question that is the seventh judgment okay the seventh judgment is the judgment of jews judgment of jews from daniel chapter 12 verse 11 daniel chapter 12 verse 11 Yes, Elsa. Daniel chapter twelve, verse one. Sorry, not eleven. Eleven, one, one. Yeah. At the time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charged of your people, and there shall be a time of tr of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at the time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. Okay. Now we are we are just I mean getting closer to the. to the question the first question what is the question okay so now we are getting the answer for that okay so this judgment is called the time of jacob's trouble the time of jacob's trouble which is written in Je jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 yes great alas that day is so great there is none like it it is the it is a time of distress for jacob yet he shall be saved out of it this is the time of distress for jacob or the time of jacob's trouble so jacob is standing for the people of israel right jacob is standing for the people of israel and this time the judgment of jews which is going to happen okay so this will be the punishment of the jews this will be the time of punishment for the jewish people for their disobedience to god two sins are there two things are there okay what is that they disobeyed god the people of israel they disobeyed god that is the first one and the second one is they rejected jesus christ they rejected jesus christ so this is going to this punishment is going for the is uh, going to be the punishment for the people of israel or for the jewish people for their disobedience to god and also their rejection of jesus christ amen so uh, mainly Uh, the people uh, the jewish people will be affected by the tribulation this will be the, their their judgment and during the time of tribulation uh, the jews who reject uh, the antichrist uh, and accept jesus will be saved okay so there will be some people in during the time of tribulation the people of israel the jewish people some people will be uh, rejecting uh, the antichrist that means they will not say okay they will say we cannot accept and i christ because this is not our christ this is not our messiah we cannot receive this christ but they will they will have to go through the tribulation they will have to go through the tribulation okay it will be the horrible thing that to go through the tribulation they cannot bear it okay but they will say that okay we will accept jesus we have to be saved now we have to be saved that is what we read in revelation chapter even uh, 714 yeah revelation 714 yeah yeah i said to him my lord you know and he said to me these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation these are the people those who are coming out of the great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb okay so there will be a group of people there will be a group of jewish people those who are coming out of the great tribulation because they were not ready to accept and die christ or they were not ready to worship the and die christ but they were saying we need jesus we need messiah and he, they were calling unto the lord and they will be saved okay so we can understand from this revelation chapter 7 <clears throat> verse 
and about uh, this it is written in sakraya chapter 13 verse 9 also in sakraya chapter 13 verse 9 uh, it is written about the same thing okay read that verse let's see and i will put this third this and i will put this third into the fire and refine them as one refined silver the, and the test and test them as gold is tested they will call upon my name and i will answer them i will say they are my people they are my people and they will say the lord is my god good okay so this is the time it the, the time of the tribulation okay that will be a most difficult furnace experience for israel okay so the the, the time the, the the time of day tribulation will be A, a most difficult furnace experience for the people of Israel. You know, people of Israel today is uh, dispersed and they are scattered to many countries now. Okay? They are scattered to many countries, but one day uh, they, they 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 shall be gathered together and they will be refined through the tribulation. That is what we read in Zechariah chapter thirteen. Okay, maybe verses seven, eight, and nine also. okay so they will be uh, now they are scattered the people of israel or the jewish people they are scattered into different different countries but one day there is a day that uh, they shall be gathered together and they they will be refined through the tribulation refined through the tribulation means just like the gold which is refined through the fire right the gold usually we are putting the gold into the fire for for more glory okay so the people of israel also will be refined through the tribulation okay uh, uh, so now we 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 will come to the question what was the question you remember what was the question the first question what is that the jews after the death of jesus if they don't believe in jesus do those people go to hell or heaven okay so the immediate answer for that question is no the immediate answer for that question is no because you know uh, the biggest sin that the people of israel did is rejection of jesus christ that means jesus christ came uh, to this world and it is written that he came to his own people that means he came to uh, uh, to to a, to a jewish family to deliver the people but but they rejected jesus christ okay so that was the biggest sin of the people of israel that they were rejecting jesus christ they did not understand they they could not realize that this is the messiah and this is the jesus you know both jews and gentiles are sinner right both jews and gentiles are sinners by birth no we cannot say that okay okay these people <clears throat> are the descendants of david or abraham so they will go to heaven now we cannot say that because bible says that both jewish people and also the gentile people they are sinners by birth they are sinners by birth every human being those who are born into this world are sinners okay so uh, only because they are the descendants of david they cannot enter heaven they cannot enter heaven unless they repent and trust in 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 the in the son of god i mean and the son of david the messiah the king of kings and the lord of lords okay so jesus christ is the king of kings jesus christ is the lord and jesus christ is the savior jesus christ is the mediator okay so because of that they must understand their sins they must understand what is their sins and their need of a savior they must repent and they must trust in jesus christ okay because he is only one mediator they must believe in jesus who is the savior okay the jewish people must believe that jesus is the only savior only mediator in between man and god okay so that is what we read in acts chapter 4 verses 10 to 12 acts chapter 4 verses 10 to 12 okay we can read that verse then we will go through that Acts chapter four, verses ten to twelve. 
Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the, so, is, the so, is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no, in no one else, for this is no other name under heaven given among men, by which must be saved. Okay, what is that? For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Only one name is there under heaven for salvation. That is the name of Jesus Christ. That is, that is the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, Israel had been chosen by God for his purpose and plan. You know, they had been prepared to receive their Messiah. They had been prepared to receive their Messiah. But they failed to recognize him. When Jesus came, Jesus took the form of a man and came into this world just as a man, as a human being. But the, the people of Israel, the Jewish people, they were not able to recognize Jesus as their leader or as their um, Messiah. Okay. You know, uh, with the life, you know, Jesus was living in this world and he died and he buried and he resurrected on, on the third day. You know, uh, the, the old the Levitical sacrifices system, okay, the sacrifice and everything that was stopped and the atonement of sins was fulfilled through the death of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what we read in, 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 in New Testament. Paul is saying about that, that thing in, in different verses. That everything that which was done by the people of Israel, the Levitic, Levitical sacrificial things and uh, uh, the atonement sins and all those things, the sacrifices, offering and everything, that was fulfilled by the death of Jesus Christ. That was fulfilled by the death of Jesus Christ. You know, the Apostle Paul makes it very clearly and perfectly that the atonement for sin is by the blood of Jesus alone. Okay, so they were sacrificing the animals before Jesus Christ, before the coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, but the Apostle Paul says that that is over, that is perfectly done. Now there is no atonement, there is no sacrifice for the forgiveness of the sins. It is already done by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is already paid the penalty by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you read Romans chapter 10 verse 12 also, there again we understand uh, uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 12, it says that uh, for there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. There is no difference between the Jews and the Greek or Gentiles. Gentiles. That means you know, God is not giving any concession only for the Jewish people. No, no, there, there is nothing like that. You know, God cannot do that, I mean, partiality. God cannot do that partiality for the Jewish people. They also have to receive Jesus. They also have to believe in Jesus Christ to, to go to heaven. Okay, uh, that, that's what we read in Romans chapter 10 verse 12, that there is no difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. Okay, so uh, according to uh, my understanding of the scriptures, uh, I believe the Old Testament saints, the Old Testament saints who died before the death of Jesus Christ. There are two groups. The Old Testament saints who died already before the death of Jesus Christ will be judged according to the laws and the Old Testament scripture. I'll make it clear. Okay. So there is a scripture. It is in, in, in Romans chapter 2 verse 12. Romans chapter 2 verse 12. It says that, uh, the Old Testament saints who died before the death of Jesus Christ, before the death of Jesus Christ, will be judged according to the laws and the Old Testament scripture. Okay, read uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 12. Yeah. For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. Okay, what is that? And all who sinned under the law will be judged by the law. That means 
that means you know they have a law and they have a scripture okay and they will be judged according to the law even they do not know about jesus christ okay they do not know about jesus christ it is written in the bible but they did not realize that okay the the, the prophetical books but at the same time before the <clears throat> coming up before the birth of jesus christ or before the death of jesus christ there are many old testament saints okay so how they will be judged they will be judged according to the law the laws were given the the scripture was given for those people and they will be judged according to the laws and the scriptures but the jewish or uh, jewish people who lives after the death of jesus christ who lives after the death of jesus christ will have to stand before the judgment seat of christ if they are not willing to accept jesus during the time of great tribulation okay so they will have to stand in front of the judgment seat of jesus christ if they are not willing to accept jesus during the time of great tribulation i told you already that during the time of great tribulation there will be a group of people uh, those who are rejecting and i christ and they will be ready getting ready to receive jesus christ as their messiah okay so those people will be escaped from the the the, the final judgment but at the same time the people those who are not accepting jesus as their personal savior and messiah they will be they will be put into the lake of fire they will be put into the lake of fire with all the other gentile people okay anyway uh, we will we will talk about this point when we study uh, maybe revelation chapter 7 revelation chapter 7 we will be uh, talking about this main point uh, uh, again uh, so i here i conclude uh, the clarification of first question along with uh, the the main portion some of the main portions of the <clears throat> book of revelation which we will be uh, uh, clarifying more uh, uh, in in any other way in the coming days okay so the second question um, is there uh, no time for looking into the second question you leave that that question now then uh, if god allows we will uh we will continue that with uh, the second question